learn what a reversal of the cervical lordosis is. When patients receive an X-ray or an MRI of the cervical spine, a lot of times there will be a reference regarding the cervical lordosis, and they call it either a cervical hyperlordosis or a or reversal of the cervical lordosis, or even maybe something called a cervical kyphosis. And to understand what this actually is, we got to understand that what is a cervical lordosis to begin with. Well, the spine is curved. The spine has normal curves for when we look at from the side of the spine. It should not be completely straight. And the reason why the spine has curves or normal curves the side is because it makes the spine stronger to gravitational or compressive forces. The, the strength that's inherently built into these curves allow the spine to be uh, very flexible and very strong at the same time. And these curves also help distribute mechanical forces or mechanical stresses evenly over the entire spine, evenly across the neck, the mid back, and the low back. And when we look at the different areas of the spine, what we're looking for specifically in the cervical area, we know that means the neck. In the thoracic area, we know that means the mid-back, and we know the lumbar is the, is the lower back, low areas. There are two main types of curves that we exist in the spine. And depending on where they're located, it can either be abnormal or normal. Lordosis are curves that go forward, right? And normally we wanna see a lordosis in the neck and in the lumbar spine. Kyphosis means a curvature that's going backwards, and normally we wanna see a kyphosis in the thoracic spine. So it's normal to have a lordosis in the neck, it's normal to have a kyphosis in the thoracic spine, and it's normal to have a lordosis in the lumbar spine. So when we look at the cervical spine, and specifically, we know there is a cervical lordosis that's supposed to be there, and there's a normal range, and this normal range should be anywhere from about 30 to about 40-ish degrees. And this range is what we wanna have there to be for a normal curve to be in. Think like of this range kind of like blood pressure, that we know there's an ideal. An ideal is roughly about 40 to 45 degrees, but there is a little bit more of a range that could be normal for that per for a person, meaning 120 over 80 is ideal blood pressure, but maybe somebody should have 125 over 85. Maybe the other person, for that person, they should have 110 over 70 for so, and that's healthy or normal for that person. So there's a little bit of range. It's not exactly, but we're looking that there should always be a forward curvature of the spine, and we always want it to be, you know, like 30 degrees or greater for that person. Now, it is possible for that to have too much cervical lordosis called hyperlordosis of the cervical spine. But in this, we're mostly talking about what is loss of this lordosis is. A loss of lordosis when it drops below that normal range, when that moves into something called hypolordosis. So let's say you have a 15 degree curvature or a 10 degree curvature. That is the spine still has a forward bend in it, but it's less than normal right? When it actually starts to bend the opposite direction, when it bends in the opposite direction and it becomes kyphotic, that's when we call, that is why the curve has now become reversal. This is where they say there's a reversal of the cervical lordosis. Another way of saying it, the cervical spine has now become kyphotic or there's a kyphosis in the cervical spine. Now, the reason why this is a problem is because now this normal mechanical load that's supposed to be in your neck that compresses forward, that compresses naturally and normally when the spine actually has compressive forces, it helps support the neck, helps support the head, of the weight of the head. It also houses the spinal cord and the nerves that come out into the body. That type of alignment is directly related to how those things function. When we lose this cervical lordosis, it can start creating a lot of problems. Now, only can it cause neck pain. It can cause effects to the nerves that actually exit the spine, can affect the organs that wherever those nerves are functioning. It can lead to degenerative changes within the spine itself and the neck. Me can start affecting the bones, the discs go through degenerative disc problems, the bones go through degenerative joint or bone disc degeneration. We start leading asymmetrical movement. We start, you can start getting headaches, you can start getting neck issues, neck pain, and even more visceral complaints, like I mentioned, because it starts affecting the nerve system. So loss of cervical lordosis can lead to a wide variety of, of symptoms and functional issues throughout the entire body, not just neck pain. So therefore, when we lose a cervical lordosis, we take it seriously because it can start compounding its effects, especially left uncorrected over a long period of time. So if you already know that you've lost a cervical lordosis and we're starting to see a loss of curve either on an X-ray or, or, or MRI, your first thing is to be proactive. Just don't let it sit there and let it worsen because normally what happens with gravity over time, whatever you have will begin to worsen and worsen and worsen, causing more and more issues.
leading to more and more problems and also becoming harder and harder to correct. So our recommendation is that you f determine the, where the kyphosis or loss of cervical lordosis is or the reversal is, start treating the underlying cause and start restoring that normal curve back into the spine, that normal lordosis, because if you can restore the normal alignment, you're gonna normally reduce or maybe even eliminate anything that's related to what's, what's, it, what's it causing, which is really the ultimate goal when it comes to the treatment of the loss of cervical lordosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.